Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm going to go from Kathmandu in Nepal to Calcutta in India and we are going to do that in an Alpha Jet. This is a freeware Alpha Jet. The interior is okay. The exterior is a Tweety Bird livery. There's numerous liveries for this little Alpha Jet but I went with the Tweety Bird one. Tweety Bird looking quite menacing. And uh, yeah, not the not as fast as the uh, Sepicat Jaguar last time, but still um, good and maneuverable so that we can do sightseeing. And I intend to stop by Mount Everest during this flight, so that is a, somewhat of a detour. Now last time, of course, I crashed in the Sepicat Jaguar, and I partly blamed that hump right in front of us. I haven't figured out how to even that out. And yeah, so this has to take off ahead of that obviously and thankfully it does it should have a short takeoff run but we're gonna find out anyway Apollo 12 audio continues they are still making their way back I estimate we have about four hours left in the Apollo 12 audio so that's where we're at so pressing play as they're answering questions from the press now about what it was like landing on the moon still on their way back of course uh, so doing a TV bit Okay, so with that, here we go. That is a heck of a hump right there. Okay. Right in the middle of the runway too. That's not very friendly. I still got it on manually configured weather, by the way. Okay, we're getting you back now, Pete. Press on. Well, anyway, all the uh, the rocks looked uh, and, and soil looked sort of a gray. And uh, if you look real close, maybe you could find a white rock now and then, or you could uh, maybe uh, disturb something and get a little darker gray. But generally, they were gray. The second day we went out, the same thing that looked gray to us the first day started looking, at least to me, started looking a, a sort of a, a brown, a dark brown or a, a tannish brown. And it was one of the, really one of the most interesting things of the year of the, of the lunar surface operation was how much that color could change just with a seven degree or so sun, sun angle change and how uh, everything there changed the color with it. Back when we came upon the surveyor, you'll recall, it was gray, I mean, it was brown. We saw it the second day, it was brown. And we asked you if it had been painted that way. You said, no, it hadn't, that it was really been white. And when we got up next to it, we discovered that sure enough, it looked brown and the, and the coating on it was, was the same brown as the soil. I would be a bit surprised when we get all those parts back to Houston. They don't turn out to be, you know, under the earth light and uh, light of a laboratory. They turn out to be a, kind of a dark uh, gray again. It's going to make geology quite a bit more difficult than, than, we, than we see it on Earth because the color cues just aren't going to be there. You're going to have to look for texture and uh, fracture and uh, cluster and a lot of other things that will aid the age in determining differences in, uh, in uh, rocks and uh, minerals. Do you want to check the red line on the, the speedometer there? Number eight. Were the moon as color, texture, and general appearance as seen from above as you expected them to be? And is there any place on Earth you know of that looks like the ocean of storms? Oh, I can't uh, think that there is. Uh, every area reminds me of, of desert areas. You might be able to find a uh, appearance like that in some deserts, particularly the backside of the moon, uh, uh, which is a lot more beat up in the front side. But as far as the uh, ocean of storms, uh, I guess Well, I feel like some peak in front. Uh, it's not too far away from Mount Everest right now. Something in front there must be it. 
Okay, the next question is for Pete. Uh, Pete, everybody's wondering about the fall you took on the moon. Was it accidental or on purpose? And how did it feel to fall in the weak lunar gravity? And could you have recovered your footing if L.D. hadn't been there to help you? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I was, uh, I didn't fall on purpose. I was trying to pick up something. And I was just in the next down. And it, it was a rock that was just going to go in the pond. And uh, we sort of had a little game we played there of leaning on the ponds and sort of doing a one-armed job or do all stretched out. And I just sort of rolled over on my side down there in the ground. And uh, Al, uh, uh, before I got all the way down, just gave me a shift back up again. And uh, I, I don't think it'd be any problem. The... Uh, I think that big peak over there must be Everest, the one that's sort of hazy on the horizon. I didn't realize it was so prominent though, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Yeah, whereas I thought it was surrounded by other peaks that obscured it from a distance. Before you actually uh, get low enough down before, before it's too late. So I can recall a number of times when I lost my balance. And if I'd lost my balance that much on Earth, I was probably falling down around the moon because you start moving so slowly, you're usually able to spin around and bend your knees and recover. And like you say, Pete, you're falling so slow that you can keep yourself or roll off or something. I, I, I think that's another thing. I think, uh, and I saw Al do this two or three times also, in trying to bend over to get something, we start to fall over, and you fall so slowly that you just start moving out and you just keep moving until your feet come back up under you again. Uh, so it's uh, not that easy to fall over up there, for that matter. And I it takes effort to fall on the moon. You know, but then, yeah, I, I see another even taller mountain you all answered, but behind it, anyway, it there. You can, I mean, uh, add any more thoughts I don't you might know. Have to it. So you maybe the this one on the front is not the it. You commented about changes in its appearance. The one I'm pointing directly at, tan, more or so less. On. Will you discuss this further and give us any impressions or conclusions you may have about what caused these changes? Well, this, this brown color is definitely uh, some lunar dust that's, that's on it and it was evenly distributed all the way around it so I don't think it's dust that we blew on with the uh, with the lamp when we landed. I think it's accumulated there. It wasn't that easy to wipe off. And um, the other thing I think that was most apparent to Al and I were, were in cutting the tubes in practice. We had, uh, and I'm going to have to check this, but theoretically we had the same uh, aluminum tubing uh, as the struts were on the surveyor. Oops, the sorry. I was looking at the map there. To cut up there so I suspected some crystallization or something that happened to the metal in the 31 months that it was sitting there. And uh, the other thing was that we noticed that the wire bundles that we had to cut, uh, the insulation had gotten very dry and very hard and also very brittle. And, uh, We're sort of sneaking into China over here. Okay, here comes number 11. Do you think that future EVAs can be extended beyond the four-hour limit? Or do you believe the number of four-hour EVAs should be increased in order to get more exploration done on each mission? So That's a good question. I think you ought to go a longer time on each EVA. Uh, we, we felt badly sort of that we got shut off the other day. Um, although we didn't have the data in real time, or did we have the agreement with the ground uh, that we Okay, yeah, go something up front hours, is Mount Everest, on it. <laughs> but yeah, it is tough to decide which day. one. And as far as being tired or anything, we weren't tired. We were. We could have kept on going. We hustled to get back just to make our four-hour deadline. And uh, I think that uh, the uh, big problem is getting suited out and getting unsuited when you get back in. Uh, doing the work outside is easy. Once you step down the ladder, you're on your way. And I think what you should do is, is get a long-term plus. And uh, if you have a three-day lab, uh, you have a plus that will stay out for eight or nine hours. 
Let's so take a look at the surrounding areas, all these white mountains in front of us. You better say yes about the geologist. Well, you go pretty good on your feet, I can tell you that right now. I guess we ran a, almost a mile out there without giving it too much thought. Uh, certainly, I think a geologist uh, should go on the trip. Now, I'll tell you one thing, though. It took every bit of knowledge I had getting that baby down there in the right place. Uh, that was no easy task. And, uh... uh I think, uh, as a matter of fact, we were discussing that earlier today. Uh, I'm a big advocate of the LLTV. I think that was a tremendous help to me. And uh, I certainly that's been my profession. And it took uh, everything you I know, had. In other words, don't leave the pilots in, behind. Uh, <laughs> yes, I send the geologist, but also that pilot. That, uh, that'll make those tasks easier. And, uh, I think that, okay, uh, so I think the peak on the, the right must be Everest, but I'll verify. And then take the necessary people to go. There's no doubt that a geologist can do a better job than I can. I'm not a geologist. Roger, Pete. Uh, this is the last question now. Let's slow down and the people a bit. who stayed up late one night last week are wondering what happened to that TV camera anyway. Yeah, what happened to the TV camera? Well, don't know what happened to it. I all I know is you told me you were getting a picture, and then uh, I didn't pay any more attention to it until I heard you talking with Al. And uh, we don't know what happened to the camera, but we have it on board. We brought it back with us, and uh, whatever is wrong with it, they'll find out and have it fixed so that they have good TV for 13. Alas. Roger, Pete. Uh, that covers all the questions we have. 13. Not so much. Goodies you'd like to show us or talk about? Okay, well, the names aren't too helpful here. I got a Noopsy Noop 2, Noopsy 2, and then there's a Hillary Peak. And then some Indian names, that, that's not really... So there's Noopsy Noop right, right below us. It's supposed to be a peak to our left that's taller than these, but I don't see it. We'll come around. Yeah, unfortunately, Mount Everest is not one of the names popping up over here. <laughs> so, they seem to be more localized names. The peak here is called Makalu. And it is a Makalu Southeast. So this is Makalu that we're flying over right now. I need to cross reference with another map. Okay, we're way south southeast of Everest. Now, I don't I can't see Everest then. Did it fail to render Everest? That would be shocking. Command module and the lamp. 
And that was our sort of big unknown. We knew there were millions and millions of parts in here. And it doesn't take very many parts to go bad before you can, you can uh, abort a, a lunar mission. It's a long chain of events. I mean, there's, there's uh, Lukla, right? Uh, close to Everest. Where is that? Without making it. And we, of course, couldn't uh, walk around and check all the parts on it. There's Lukla. We don't know that much about it. We did know uh, I don't know how close that actually is to Everest, though. At the Cape and uh, Buzz Hello there and, uh, and Chuck Trent Galley, our team leader, and a lot of others that I didn't mention right then. And we uh, kind of felt pretty good about the fact that they were handling the gear. But we're on the way home now. We'll be uh, back tomorrow. And uh, every bit of this machinery has worked beautifully. We've had a couple of small lasers, but none of the equipment that we uh, worried about has uh, has shown anything but perfect performance. The fuel cells, for example, are just perking along just as beautifully as they can be, putting out 20 amps of speed. Uh, I mean, holding, holding it sure looks like and I think this, this thing right in front of us ought to be Mount Everest, uh, right? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's tall. And the people down the Cape have checked it out. The only and, uh, competitor is this Makalu thing. We got everything we were supposed to do done. And I hope that uh, all those people there that had anything to do with this hardware, that built it, that designed it, or that checked it out, feel as proud about this mission as I do. Roger, Al, I think I can speak for everybody down here when I say that uh, we're all darn proud of it ourselves. I think all of our little mascots, Snoopy and BC and the rest of them. Yeah, the name of it is have, uh, not in English. Really it has a Chinese well, name and an Indian name. The before the, but the people and it says 8,765 meters right in front of us right there. And I'll double check that, but this must be Mount Everest. Boy, is it white right now. Did they capture it when there were clouds here? Because that's no good. Okay, and there's a secondary peak, 8,516 meters to our right. Roger, I'm sorry, ahead. left. And then a whole bunch of other peaks around. So right over Mount Everest, and we can check the above ground level altitude there. Yeah, that's 29,000 feet. I don't, I don't have memorized the height in meters for Everest, so. I need that 29,000 feet. Yep, that's that's the puppy right there. So there you are, Mount Everest. And surrounding areas. Good. We got you on the big, big screen. Hey, great. Tell him we'll be home in about a week. Roger. All the run. We wrote a little uh, inscription over the FDAI and signed it. Roger, try, uh, Where's Lukla compared to our current location? Pretty far Yankee south, Clipper. actually. Uh, Still a ways away. Roger, we can read it now, thanks. Yeah, the textures on this side of it don't look particularly good. All right. Proceeding to Calcutta. And we copy the signatures. Which is and directly is south. Roger, we'll be there, yeah. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, go ahead. Roger, uh, we got a uh, state vector for you. Would yeah, you definitely like clouds cause texture problems. It the it well, that is what it is. Of all mountains to have that, it has to be Everest, of course. <laughs> uh, it is a little different. Carry on, take it anywhere you want to uh, send it to. Up It'll be interesting uh -huh. to see what this area looks uh, like in Flight Sim, the, the new Flight to. Sim from Microsoft. This will be a real test of its abilities. Okay, we'll just put it in the left slots and preserve the P-23 for now. Okay, you can stop it in any slot you want to. Roger, babe.
So the little Alpha jet has a maximum speed of 540 knots at sea level. Uh, Mach uh, 0 0.85, basically airliner five. speeds. Disable Bravo and Charlie. Roger. Technically, it should have gotten off the ground uh, a little bit better than it did. I was already trying to rotate at about 90-ish well, knots, an and that's basically, I mean, and, it, it can uh, get off the ground at 117 it ought to, we'll but it didn't later. seem to until we got to like 130. Stand by just a second, Pete. We're still scratching it out. Okay. Follow 12 Houston. Uh, Foo and accept, and we'll start the airplane. You got it. Now, what's this river below us? Here she comes. Twelve Houston, I have your maneuver pad, mid course seven, ready? Go. Roger, mid course seven, RCS, GNN. Down four seven is two, five, zero, three, six. NA, NA. Two, four, one. Two, one, five, three, three, three. Down 81. Minus zero, zero. Oh, zero I got an Indian six, name on the map. Zero. Oh, yep. Yep. That's not in uh, Plus any script zero, that I can zero, read. Zero, zero, two. Roll pitch and yaw are all zips. Three, one, zero. All zips. Down well, 44, we're more or less NA, following NA. it down, so presumably Delta VT, it flows zero, through zero, Calcutta at zero, some point. Six, one, zero, one, three, I mean, zero, a lot of rivers zero, sort of converge zero, at that six, point, of course. One. Sextant, one, one, uh, two, or maybe four, it hits the Ganges one, before four, and flows into the Ganges. Three, niner, seven. Foresight. Zero, four, four. It may Up, be the Koshi zero, River, or at least one, a tributary three. into it. Left, five, zero. The rest is N-A. Comments. Sirius and Rigel for GDC Align. Well, we'll follow Roll it and see what three, happens. <laughs> three, six. Pitch, two, six, two. Yaw, three, Five, seven. College is four quads plus X. Under other, we assume entry IMU alignment. Over. Okay, I've got it on a different map. It's the Arun River, actually. It'll flow into the Koshi River, I think. Or more or less, either that or it changed its names. Oops, sorry, I was looking at the map again. Uh, well, so, yeah, Arun River. Okay, going down here. I guess its source must be proximal to 
Everest. After the weather being told me for the launch that it was going to be clear, we scattered clouds. You can see once again all these little rivers streaming out of the mountains. The preliminary weather in the recovery area. Uh, we'll give it to you if you really want it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Give it to us, please. Okay, we'll scare it up. We've got it all written out somewhere here. While you're waiting, I got a few more football scores. These are American League. Yeah, go ahead, send them up. Okay, New York Jets, 40. Cincinnati, 7. Boston, 35. Buffalo, 21. And then back to National, uh, Washington was 27, Atlanta 20. Twelve, Houston with the weather. We are still in this is based Nepal on the right now. This on uh, 23 November at 1100. But we are approaching the border with India. The weather India. will be 1800 scattered, variable broken, high scattered, 10 miles. The wind's from 120 at 15, and the seas are 4 feet. Okay, thank you. Twelve, Houston, a computer's yours. So at this point, with all the meander, it's now the Koshi River. Houston with an entry pad. Your entry pad. Mid pack is the area. Zero, 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 one, five, one, zero, zero, zero. GET for the horizon check is two, four, four, zero, five. Well, this two, will be a one, much shorter flight than the last one, two, that's for sure. Six, seven. Now 61 is minus one. Five eight two minus one six five well, one let's see six. What we can see of the mountains still Zero, not much. Six two now sixty three six one one six six four niner one one six seven niner three six one Niner seven. RRT is two four four two 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 one zero zero two niner. Down sixty nine is all NAs. V cert four zero 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 two one zero 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 one niner zero three two three zero eight zero four sextant two three two niner four six two niner zero foresight got some interesting zero, lights emanating from it six. from this angle up one Four, I'm sure about seven. that. Left, this angle looks legit. One, one. Lift vector up. Comment one assumes entry IMU alignment. Comment two assumes mid course seven. Over. Zero zero two nine. 
Okay, we have now crossed uh, into India. When you start up PTC, we'd like you to do it with Quad Bravo and Charlie disabled. The border is rather and intricate. A switches for your comm system. Uh, and I can't quite figure out group one circuit breaker should be closed. what defines the border. But TV switch I mean, it off. seems to and then go ahead and power down your high gain antenna be very and jagged. But I don't know reminder, your state what the boundaries are defined by. And your B-23 is still on the CSM side. Okay, we've got all those switches set. We're going to be down to Bravo right now. Roger. I mean, I don't think they're defined by... Uh, Houston 12. Go ahead, 12. ...geographic features, but then usually... Uh, what's the course adjusting for? When uh, you get yeah, such an intricate border with so many curves and such, uh, uh, well, there is a geographic the feature the involved. That, uh, you're a little bit shallow and you want to steepen it up. Right now we're looking at a flight path angle of 5.77 and a perigee of 30. Okay. So still following hey, the Koshi River? And it does flow into the Ganges eventually, but we won't follow the Ganges because the Ganges goes through Bangladesh and we're sort of hanging a, a left, if you will. Uh, Roger, Al, a surgeon concurs on that. Uh, they'd like to watch the CMP tonight for uh, the sleep period, and uh, the other two guys in the bags can uh, go without. Sounds good. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we're handing over from Madrid to Goldstone in about uh, 20 seconds. Okay. Houston through Goldstone, how do you read? Pat, clear. This is Apollo Control at 225 hours, 10 minutes. Apollo 12 distance from Earth now, 94,762 nautical miles. Velocity 5,540 feet per second. There aren't a whole lot of big, big this cities preliminary along bed. this route. Well, Houston, looks like all we need from you is your pre-sleep checklist data, and we'll leave you alone. Okay. Of course, Calcutta itself is humongous. 12 Houston, uh, we're ready for uh, the memory now. Just going to tell you we're ready. Roger, Pete. 
in the morning. Roger 12, we copied your EMOD. This, uh, by the way, guys, is the last shift for your friendly gold team. And gold flight and all of us on the team are mighty proud of you guys, and we thought we'd like to let you know it. We'll see you back here at the ranch in a few days, so take care and don't take any bolters. Roger, Roger, we appreciate it. Uh, great job for you guys. Thank you. So, as it merges uh, with the Ganges, uh, the Koshi River actually turns sharply minutes. to we the left, well, to the west, the uh, sorry, to the east, we'll say. Um, you can see it to our right, and then it's turning this there. Preliminary pad that we sent up for uh, mid course correction number seven. Calls for an ignition time of 240. And actually, hours, uh, so the Koshi is the one that's closer, and then seconds. the Ganges is the one that's further away. You can sort of see it in front of us. The magnitude of the maneuver uh, 6.1 feet per second. It uh, would use the service module reaction control system uh, with a burn time of 13 seconds. This uh, MCC-7 pad will be updated. The final pad will go up to the crew about two hours prior to the maneuver. And these figures could change some by that time based on the tracking between now and then. Some, uh, some, of the, some of the more significant uh, items in the preliminary entry pad that we passed up. And this uh, pad will be updated tomorrow too, prior to uh, entry. But a preliminary, uh, on the preliminary pad today that we passed up shows uh, entry interface at 400,000 feet at an elapsed time of 244 hours, 22 minutes, 21 seconds. Velocity predicted at that time, 36,116 feet per second. That blackout would begin 19 seconds after entry interface. Blackout would end 3 minutes, 22 seconds after entry interface. Drogue shoots deploy eight minutes, four seconds after entry interface. Uh, main shoot deploy times are, are not included in that uh, preliminary pad. Uh, we also show uh, expected uh, maximum G forces during entry of 6.2. 6.2 G's, folks. And for reference, for a landing point uh, coordinates. There's the Koshi River. Point. That's the Ganges in front, and you can see them merge to the left there. Degree south latitude. 165.16 degrees west longitude. At 225 hours 16 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Interesting how wide the rivers were upriver. That was the uh, sum total of, of the call and we have monitor, monitored on telemetry. In fact, the crew has disabled those quads. Apollo 12 now 93,951 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity. 5,575 feet per second. And the entry clock showing 18 hours, 56 minutes remaining until uh, entry interface. This is Mission Control, Houston. City to our forward left is Bagalpur. And the Ganges, of course, uh, flows out in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is largely the delta of the Ganges River. This is Apollo Control at 226 hours, 9 minutes. We've just and been called to the River. crew to ask them to chlorinate water. Here's that conversation.
Bangladesh is just off to our left at the moment. So we're still over India. Looks like uh, I've got lack of photos, photo scenery to the right there. We'll ignore that area then for the time being. Sounds delightful. <laughs> oh, this landscape doesn't look particularly promising around here. Pretty dry. Maybe just the season though. So I'm thinking that I probably won't be trying to land in Kathmandu in the future, <laughs> in this game. Just just avoid it. Crashed in the SR-71, crash in the Sepakat Jaguar, it's just a bad idea. Incidentally, our next flight will be with the SR-71 from Calcutta to Kuala Lumpur. That'll be a long distance, but hopefully not too long in time. It won't be too bad in the morning. Okay. Hey, Jerry, I'm sorry I'm falling asleep here. I left my power and audio off, but I got to back right now. Okay. My heart. We got you loud and clear. Coming away over there. You better believe it, okay. Just pity patting right down the line. Watch it get lazy. Watch it get lazy. I don't know why things seem doubled right now you in the audio. Night. Good night, guys. Maybe they're just sleepy. This is Apollo Control at 226 hours. 12 minutes. Now we said goodnight to the crew again for the second time. We don't anticipate having to, to call them again. The uh, surgeon decided, however, he did want the water chlorinated even though uh, there was no buffer left in the spacecraft uh, for the chlorination process. And we wanted to uh, to have it done now so that by in the morning the water would be uh, palatable for the crew. Apollo 12 is now 91,354 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,690 feet per second at 226 hours, 13 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 226 hours, 18 minutes. The crew has just called That's us. some rough landscape over to our right. Found uh, another bag of really the tall, buffer. In interesting the colors track. down there. We'll use that in connection with the chlorination process. Here's the tape of that conversation, which had just been concluded. Houston 12. Go ahead, 12. Apollo 12, Houston, go ahead. I think we have a third bag of this stuff. Not everything. Good show. We, uh, we figured that was probably what had happened, Steve, and we were thinking of if you talk to us again, we were going to tell you where everything was stowed and see if you could find it. 
<laughs> Let them sleep already. Interesting. I just noticed that the Ganges River changes name to the Padma River in Bangladesh. There is an offshoot of the Ganges River called the Hooghly River, and the Hooghly River does, I believe, run through Calcutta. And I don't know if that's what we were sort of following. I don't think so. There's a lot of rivers. There's a lot of rivers. So that one to our left, I don't know which one that is. You can sort of see the Ganges is still to our left hours, in the distance. Apollo 12 is 85,411 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 5,970 feet per second. Flight director Gary Griffin and the Gold team is in the process of turning over their duties here in the control center to flight director Glenn Lenny, the black team. Capcom on uh, the new ship will be astronaut Don Lynn. Change of ship news conference scheduled to begin at 10.30 p.m. Central Standard Time at the Houston News Center. Participants will be uh, Flight Director, Jerry Griffin, the Captain Com, Jerry Carr, and the Retrofire Officer, Charles Dieterich. At 228 hours, this is Mission Control Houston. No, but I can't quite see where this Hoogly River is. So it's vaguely familiar for some reason. Hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 presently 80,837 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 6,201 feet per second. Flight Director Glenn Lunny at present is uh, reviewing the mission status with his flight controllers and checking on events uh, for today's re-entry and splashdown. The crew uh, still has about five hours left uh, in their scheduled rest period. The flight plan calls for the uh, crew to be awake. Well, I guess, I mean, it is the main river through Calcutta, time. so I guess it makes sense that the Hoogly River would uh, be familiar. All the spacecraft are continuing to uh, function well at this time. At uh, 229 hours, 19 minutes, this is Apollo Control in Houston. This is Apollo Control, 230 hours, 22 minutes. It's now been some four hours since we last heard from the uh, crew about uh, 
226 hours, 18 minutes. This uh, sleep period is scheduled to end some four hours from now at 234 uh, hours. Present time, Apollo 12. It might be that thin river to our left. The uh, Ganges is further along and uh, a little bit hard to see now. But there's a thin river to our left, and that's probably the Hooghly River. This is Apollo Control at 231 hours, 18 minutes. At present time, the crew is about uh, three hours from the scheduled end of their sleep period. Well, maybe we should detour a little bit to try and follow it. We're, We're not that far away from Calcutta, though. Uh, 5.1 pounds per square inch, which is normal. The cabin temperature has been uh, running in the uh, low 70s. The uh, space digital show the uh, spacecraft to be traveling at a speed of 6,614 feet per second at the present time, uh, altitude 73,421 nautical miles from the Earth. And the uh, flight surgeon reports that uh, Dick Gordon the only crew member on whom we have biomedical data at the present time, uh, sleeping soundly. At 231 hours and 19 minutes, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control at 232 hours, 18 minutes. And we now have less than two hours until the scheduled wake-up time for the crew. All spacecraft systems continuing to function well. There's been no change in any uh, system status since our last report. It's been a very quiet uh, ship. These are all the overnight the, uh, calls from the public affairs officer. Uh, altitude has uh, just dropped below now the 70,000 nautical mile mark. We're reading 69,598 nautical miles from the Earth at this time. At 232 hours 19 minutes, this is Apollo Control Houston. There's a follow control at uh, 233 hours, 18 minutes. And we're now 55 minutes away from the scheduled crew wake-up time. Follow 12, traveling now at a speed of 7,110 feet per second. And our distance from Earth has decreased now to 65,617 nautical oh. miles. Okay, it's stuck to my cursor somehow. We've had a very quiet... I did not mean for that here. to happen. Most of the night, the activity is uh, okay. So it is the Hooghly River. Spacecraft systems reviewing the status uh, for today's splashdown. Uh, this is Apollo Control at 233 hours 19 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 234 hours, 2 minutes. Uh, about 15 minutes ago, we got some indications that uh, at least one of the crew was awake. Uh, we've seen uh, data here indicating that they're operating the uh, disky, their uh, spacecraft computer. And our uh, communications engineer reported just a few moments ago that uh, the crew has configured their communications for I don't know why it shows a carrier there that's a little bit bizarre uh, but uh, VECC is the airport out at Calcutta so it's not really lately selected but there we go Calcutta Chandra Bose International Waves of four I guess we should start descent. 
winds out of the east southeast at uh, five knots. Visibility of about ten. Well, miles. this is actually a pretty big range map right now. Scattered showers in the recovery area. We're not in that much of a hurry. At the present time, we show the spacecraft uh, some 62,500 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 7,330 feet per second. And we'll stand by now for a call from the crew. We don't expect uh, Capcom Don Lynn to put in a uh, call to the crew for about uh, 10 more minutes. Okay, we can see some of the uh, suburbs of Calcutta in front of us. Right along the river. Roger, we'll have a second for you. I mean, I don't know how far out we should count the metropolitan area of Calcutta, but my understanding is it's pretty far out. And uh, right now we're reading about uh, 24 nautical miles away from the airport, so you know, not too far as far as metropolitan areas go. So I think it's safe to say that it is all part of the metropolitan area. Is that okay, runway right that there, the airport, or yeah, is it okay. further along? I don't know. I don't think that that can be it, right? Maybe. Jeez. My yeah, sense of scale is a little bit off. 35 hours, 31 minutes. We have just had a report from the uh, radiation support room that our solar particle alert. The problem is that the actual buildings are way smaller than the uh, autogen buildings. They're much more a, uh, densely packed together. Description of the uh, size of the floor, except that it was so sort of quite the, small. Uh, that autogen makes it a little bit deceptive. No readings from instrumentation on the spacecraft that indicate 
Yeah, yeah I think that is the airport. Additional levels of radiation One control. runway. What's the population of Calcutta? At the time, the uh, spacecraft is traveling at a speed of 7,825 feet per second. Stand by, here's a call from the spacecraft. Uh, Roger, we'll get it for you momentarily, and in return, can you give us a sleep and uh, PDR, 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 PDR. Population of the city itself is 4.5 million in 2011, probably more than that. The metropolitan area is 15 million, and again, probably more than that. You can see what I mean, uh, you can see the little dots. And even there, we have some of the autogen okay, there, the but I think even uh, then the autogen is uh, too big. Alpha is 26.3, Bravo is 26.6. more of the city down south, but... Alright, we need Delta to slow down tremendously. Uh, do we have air brakes? Yes, we do. H2 total is 21.9%, O2 total is 27.7%. Calibration attitude, roll eight niner, pitch three three four, yaw zero. The optics calibration star is star two four. P23 sighting attitude, roll eight seven, pitch three two niner, yaw three one six. For the fourth star. There's actually two run. Uh, wait, the map makes it look like there's two no. runways. If unable to use I don't see two runways. The there. No alternate stars will be updated. Wait a sec. That's not it. Is it? No. Uh, stars is it behind us? Okay, I think this is a different airport that I keep looking at. Okay, P23 door site. Yeah, this airport, which is very prominent, is this VE-31, Barrackpur. That's not the international airport I'm supposed to be landing at. Boy, does it stick out, though. Okay, I'm going way too fast. <laughs> Come on, follow the rules, little alpha jet. Uh, boy, the international airport doesn't seem nearly as prominent as this little, little airport is. Interesting. Apollo 12, uh, Houston, uh, one uh, flight plan change for you when you want to copy. Okay, go ahead. At uh, 238 hours and 30 minutes, the report of the command module RCS injector valve temperatures delay that report. Two four zero hours, and that will improve our chances of not having to do any heating. A little too fast. Okay, I just looked at them right now, and uh, over the night during the big TV, they're all above four volts. Some just barely. And, uh, uh, I don't know uh, we'll if I can see it properly. <laughs> No, maybe it's that over there. I don't know. I should probably go into the cockpit now. Roger, thanks, Pete. We have it. We have it. This is Apollo Control at 235 hours, 43 minutes. The flight surgeon no. reports that the personal I'll radiation... I'll just line up and hope that it's visible. Are passed down uh, by the Jeez, crew. We need air brakes. Indicate we need lots uh, more no air brakes. significant increase in radiation levels. The uh, increase over the past 24 hours is about uh, 30 millirads per crewman. And this is about what we have been running uh, for a 24 hour period. At the present time, uh, Apollo 12 is 55,200. 77 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 7,896 feet per second. Uh, 
Okay, airport, where are you? Apollo 12, Houston. Should be pretty uh, well like lined up with you it. you to give us uh, the high gain antenna, if you would. Uh, we'd like you to turn the power on, give us wide beam width, uh, react mode. Uh, the pitch angle is minus Here down. seven minor, and yaw is one, five, six. Coming at you. Oh, I see some lights. Ah, I, I understand. Okay, there it is. There you go, it's all locked up. Thank you. Well, leave it in wide. That's good. Well, leave it in wide. Okay. Go ahead, Uh, that's just slow, apparently. It shouldn't be. The stall speed is 170 knots clean. I've got flaps. Crikey. I mean, I looked up the stall speed and all, but you can never tell if that's going to be the real stall speed of the aircraft in the game sometimes. I do try. Okay, I got it now. But yeah, uh, with flaps yeah, up that, and everything, uh, it's They're supposed to be 117 perfect. knots as far as wikis goes. I don't have the manual for it or anything. But Why I'm guessing that's a lie right over. now. Maybe it's the fuel well, load, I don't know. With flaps, it's supposed to be like 92 knots stall speed. Well, P and R and C and is one, two different things. Whatever. Let me uh, make sure everything is all extended. Seems like it. Oh, I've still got the air brakes. Well, that doesn't matter. I was going by the speed, not the. Uh, well, the I don't know. Maybe air brakes make I a difference. Uh, Don, star 75 is not visible. Uh, Roger, no 75. And I want to press on to star 24. Roger. Well, at least the runway looks flat. Don, one of the problems I'm having with this one is that star is so dim that when I get it down to the air glow, I it can't pull up. Out to nothing and I can't quite tell uh, where it is. But I'll go ahead and mark off anyway. Roger. Uh, ow. I swear. Half the time I can't find him, I'm losing. Something wrong with the stall speeds of this plane. Okay, well anyway, at least we didn't completely wreck it. I don't know, we might have busted a tire. It didn't say so though. Maybe the runway is just bumpy. Uh, the tires seem fine. Yeah, okay. Well, we made it. We are in Calcutta. Welcome. So next time, it'll be a much more challenging plane than this. This is a trainer, for heaven's sakes. It'll be the SR-71, and we'll be trying to go fast. We'll see how that works is that out for a, me. Is uh, sun reflection, or what's causing the orange ball, do you know? Orange ball? I don't know. I would suspect it might be proximity to the sun, but I'm, I'm really not sure of that. Okay, I'm going to pause the audio with the discussion of the orange ball and as I continue to taxi I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this flight if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time